ladies and gentlemen, Jack Simmons. Come on, let him hear. Come here for Peter Balls. And Megan, good job up here. It's not easy to get to Peter doing comedy, so you deserve a round of applause for just coming up here. I have been in comedy for a while, but don't let fool you, we still have the same problems as even the beginning people do. I do want to say, though, if you are a beginner, don't worry about getting material. Just open your eyes and look, and you'll see things around you. Like the other day, I was driving down from upstate. I went to a very small town. I had passed this bar, and on the side of the bar was a door, and on the door there was a sign that said, Topless Dancer. I said, one? <laughs> one topless dancer? Is that such a thing? Yeah. So I said, I gotta see this. I pulled off and went into the bar. I walk into the bar, it's completely empty. Go, hey! Where's the entertainment? The bar turned, turned around and said, I'm having my break now, honey, okay? Uh -huh. <laughs> in one minute, kitchen closes in five minutes, all right? Wednesday night's open pole night, so come on down. Uh -huh. You just never know, you know, that's the thing. Most comics will draw around their, uh, their life and their family. I come from a large Irish Catholic family. Not my own, but, you know, still a very nice one. Uh -huh. You know about Irish people, the Irish attitude towards death. People have a good time. Irish people try to enjoy themselves wherever they go. You know what I'm saying? My uncle Bob died. Kind of an unusual wake. Five dollar cover, three drink minimum. <laughs> you know it's a great wake when you walk in a funeral home and get your hand stamped at the front door. <laughs> I don't know how my dad did New York City fireman tough as nails, but I don't know how he survived with all of us. I don't know how he did it. Imagine taking, good, I tell you, there was six boys and one girl. So. Before we go anywhere, my father would keep it secret because he didn't want us talking about it all week, you know? It's like, we wouldn't know we were going on vacation until 8 o'clock that morning. Yeah. You know, we'd wake up and go, come on, we're going. Where are we going? Where are we going? Shut up. Get the hell in the car. Oh, I love that place. We went there last year, didn't we? I love shut up and get in the car. That's a great place. Shut the hell up. Get in the car. My father, I mean, my dad, though, was, um, he loved us. But he wasn't one of these kind of fathers that, you know, huggy and moochy and kissy and everything like that. You know, he was a tough love kind of guy. My mom was like that too. In fact, when the theory came up about being a child's best friend, have you ever heard that? You know, be a child's best friend. And I said to my mom one time, how come you didn't treat us that way? She said, let me ask you something. Do you think if you weren't our friends, we'd want any of you as our children? <laughs> Hell no! My dad and my mom were married 50 years, 50 folks, count them, 5 oh, out of the dance floor, people are dancing around. I said to my dad, when you look at that, dad, look at that. 50 years out there, you and mom put it all together, dad. What was it that kept you and mom together for 50 years? Was it the love? Was it the sex? What was it, dad? Was it the magic? Was it the children? He said, oh, it was definitely the children. I said, really? He said, yeah, none of us wanted custody of you bastards. <laughs> But my dad was, uh, he was a tough man in order to make a family of seven go on one fireman's, you know, payment, paycheck. That was hard. In fact, my dad almost ran the family like a business. He was almost like a CEO of our family. And I never realized how tough it was and how serious it was until one day he called me down in the middle of the night. He had all the ledgers on the table and he said, son, it's been a very tough year. I'm afraid we're going to have to let you go. <laughs> Dad, come on, you know the deal. I get two weeks' notice and a severance package. <laughs> hey, Mom! Don't yell for Mom. She's on disability. <laughs> oh, man. That's the way it gets, you know? That's the way it gets. Uh, I've been married once. Only once. Married to a woman from Iran. That's a true story. It really was a woman from Iran. And uh, I had friends that have married four or five times. I was laugh at these multiple marriages. I think if you marry more than three or four times, let's say, let's say three times, you marry more than three times, they said change the vows, right? Right, instead of saying I do, they should say you'll do. <laughs> I was going back and forth once on this dating line with this girl when I first got divorced, you know, and it was like, oh, how are you guys? And, and, and she finally writes to me, she says, you know, you seem like a nice guy, but I don't want to have to go out and go on a date and spend all this money. Why don't you just come over to my place? I have a great place. We'll cook. We'll watch movies. We'll have a great time. This goes on like two weeks in a row. 
She says, no, no, stay and I just, I'd rather cook, I'd rather cook. I said, honey, God, it's so nice to meet an old-fashioned woman. She said, honey, I'm not old-fashioned. I'm under house arrest. <laughs> that explains it. I'm basically an optimistic person. I'm cheery. I believe one day I can win the lottery. I do believe that. If that isn't self-delusion, what is? I wish that I could have been in charge of selling condoms to the public because they never got really creative with it. I think what they should do, and they can still do it, is they should take condoms and come up with some fancy slogans. In fact, they're already out there. They're already out there. Right? I think we should combine condoms with the New York State Lottery. Like Trojans. Hey, you never know. You gotta be in it to win it. Remember, all you need is a dollar and a dream. That's what I say. I, uh, I like life now, I like the diversity in America. I was, in, I was in Starbucks the other day and I heard this family, they were sitting there, a very nice family, they were talking, and I heard her calling her son and she was going, Facebook, Facebook, come over here, Facebook. I said, excuse me, ma'am, but is your son named Facebook? <laughs> she said, no, 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 it's a, it's a last name, it's B-U-K-H, it's Book, Facebook. I said, because it's gonna be a bad enough time for that kid anyway. Imagine he comes home from school, you know, Fosbook, did you make any friends today? Yes, I made friend Utu. Utu is good friend with me. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know. You just kind of wonder. You just wonder how people are going to survive. We're moving on so fast in society. That, and you know, you know, you can tell you're kind of like moving on and getting older. Like, you know, you're getting older. Every time you go to buy music, everything you want is walked down to $1.99. <laughs> <laughs> What's it going to be like for the baby boomers being in the nursing homes, eh? You see the old people walking along the park 30 years from now with their memories like, whip it, whip it good, whip it good. <laughs> you wonder, can that still be like that? I don't know. I don't know. I used to work as a lifeguard. Great job. You take lifeguard people, conjure up images, right? Sit there, get 10, rescue beautiful women. Let me tell you something, folks. Beautiful women don't drown. <laughs> Bro. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Little kids, little kids, what they will do is little kids will go out in the water and swim and they will urinate right there. See, see, no, but the kids, when you ever see kids, will stay right in the shoreline and go. See, adults, we do it too. We just swim out a little further so nobody can see us. You can always tell when someone's getting ready to go, the first thing they do is separate themselves from the pack. <laughs> they get out about maybe 10 yards or so. As soon as you're done back, better get the hell out of there real quick, right? You don't want to float back in your own whiz. Here comes Uncle Leo swimming over that spike. Hey, come on in, it's warm! Uh, Must be the Gulf Stream right here, it's beautiful. Uh, oh man, I remember when I used to help my dad when I was a kid, I used to, that has one of those pull start mowers, you know, he's out there on Saturday afternoon, you know, with a pull start. He could get the electric start and insist on having a pull start or something. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> <laughs> then you get that one more determined death dad plunge, you know? All of a sudden, white smoke is all over the engine. My mother's going, What's going on out there? Well, either I blew the engine or we have a new pope. <laughs> Thanks a lot. You guys are being chosen. Thank you. Jack Simmons, give him a hand.